Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where I have a whole host of new Dior holiday goodies to try and share all of my thoughts and swatches and everything with you today. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the Dior holiday collection for 2023 has landed. It is here, it has arrived and I have quite a a bit of it in this little box. So first of all, let's take a look at the holiday box. Kind of understated for Dior. I feel like they typically, in previous years, when you order from their holiday collection, you will get a very festive looking ribbon. So it's always the standard classic Dior white box with the gold Dior lettering. But usually it will be like a gold festive ribbon or red, it's usually very sparkly. Whereas this year we have this pink ribbon, which isn't particularly festive and feels a little unusual for Dior. It could be that it is actually the ribbon that was designed for the Blooming collection and they're just continuing to use it currently for the holiday collection. It could be that if you order in a few weeks time, you'll get a different, more festive box. Maybe they're just still using up the ones from the previous more floral spring summer type collection. But that is the box and the ribbon that I received with my holiday order. So this collection is very large. It includes two advent calendars, which I think is great because there are completely different price points, a much smaller one and a much more expensive, very luxurious larger one. We have lots of little sets and kits and gifts that include products from their permanent line. And then we have a lot of new products as well. So first up, we have two of their five color eyeshadow palettes. These are limited edition and will set you back 57 pounds or $60. And these were created to invite you to take an enchanted stroll through the Tuileries garden by day or night depending on the color story that you choose. So of course, Night Walk features silvery and black tones that contrast with a radiant golden hue. And Promenade Doré reveals luminous hues of bronze and gold accented by a silver shade. So these two eyeshadow palettes are literally designed to be your day and your night time look. But of course you can wear them however and whenever you would like. But it's very clear that one is a sort of warmer, more typical, daytime and one is much cooler, more typical nighttime color story. So I picked up both of these. I didn't mean to. I intended to order Promenade Doré. That was the one that appealed to me the most, but there was a mix up on Dior's website and they had them labeled the wrong way around. So the pictures that were showing for Promenade Doré were actually labeled as night walk. So I ordered that and when it arrived, I realized what had happened. So they were very helpful, refunded me and let me keep night walk. So then I ordered the correct one. So now I have both to show you, which is very, very useful. So let's take a look at Night Walk first. It does come with those two little brushes and all varying levels of shimmery shadows. The two sort of white silver shadows are very close in shade, but the top right shade is a little more sheer. And there we have that gold. I mean, they all look super pretty and I was pleasantly surprised actually once I swatched this palette because I wasn't interested in it at all. But when I swatched it, I thought it actually looks a lot more wearable than I expected. And next we have Promenade Doré. Absolutely gorgeous. So this features three varying depths of gold to bronze, then a sort of white gold and that silvery shade in the middle, which kind of looks like it doesn't belong to me. What do you guys think? 
Okay, we then have two limited edition shades of the Rouge Blush. These will set you back £43 or $48. We have 211, which is Precious Rose. And this is described by the brand as an orangey pink and is in the satin finish. And then we have 621 Splendid Rose, which is described as a deep rosewood and that is in the natural finish. So you may be surprised that I actually passed on Precious Rose, but I did see swatches prior to choosing what I, items I wanted and it just is going to be too light for my skin tone. I've seen it look gorgeous on fair and light skin tones, but on a more light medium, medium skin tone, it's going to be barely visible if visible at all, but it does look very beautiful if you have a fairer skin tone than me. So I just chose to pick up Splendid Rose. Here she is absolutely gorgeous embossing and again comes with a mini brush and here she is swatched so we have a heavy swatch and then a very light blended out swatch so you can kind of see the versatility there i think this will work on a really large variety of skin tones because you can see how subtly it can be used and i definitely agree it has that beautiful natural finish that is very soft not matte but no shimmer or glitter in there, absolutely beautiful, very smooth. I can't wait to show you that one on the cheeks. I've already used it yesterday, I couldn't resist. I actually applied it on top of the makeup that I was already wearing because I was that desperate to see it on the cheeks and it looked gorgeous. We then have a new shade of Dior Addict, which if you're not new here, you will know it's my all time favorite lipstick formula. Very hydrating, shiny lipstick, absolutely beautiful. These will set you back 37 pounds or $45. They are refillable and the refills are usually available but at the time I purchased this new shade Jardin Doré was not available in the refill it was only available in the classic black packaging there she is a very sheer shimmery beautiful neutral bronze shade I was very surprised by this I was expecting much more color but it's much more sheer as you can see the sheen there beautiful finish but very natural as far as the amount of color barely there. So that's going to be interesting. I have a lot of these and I was all set to do a load of swatch comparisons, but this is actually not going to be close or similar to anything I have because all of the other sort of nudes I have are more classic nudes with a lot more pigment, a lot more opaque. So yeah, that one is going to be very different to any of the ones that I own. Almost like a balm with a bit of shimmer. And that is also limited edition, that lipstick shade. And then we have a new limited edition Dior Addict lipstick case in the Tuileries design. This will set you back £28 or $30. And I could not resist it. I have so many of these lipsticks. This is the most beautiful case I've seen. The one that I've been most excited for out of all of the ones that they've previously released here it is it's absolutely stunning it has that cream background with the gold shimmering sparkling twinkling thread and the christian dior logo gorgeous so sparkly i was photographing it yesterday in the sun and it was just sparkling away absolutely stunning and finally, for the products that I'm gonna be talking about today, there is a brand new lipstick formula. And this one is exciting. I had to try this one out. These are the Rouge Dior Forever Liquid Sequin Finish. I am so excited to try these. I'm so excited for this. So these are available in four shades and they will set you back 39 pounds or $47. And they all appear to be limited edition and these are a liquid lipstick transfer proof with a limited edition and new glittery finish once pressed together the lips are enhanced with ultra pigmented color for 12 hours and embellished with sparkling pearlescent pigments without compromising on comfort of course i had to get 999 i mean you could not see or know a more festive lipstick color than this i don't know really how to rub this swatch together but of course we will try this shade on my lips in a moment so i'm beside myself obviously this isn't a brand new idea i have seen ciate made there 
glitter flip was it called years ago so this has been done before but never by Dior I'm very excited to see how these actually work how they look and feel on the lips I cannot wait to try that lipstick okay so that is everything that I chose from this collection there are lots more to choose from but this was my kind of picks from everything that was available let's jump in to the application Okay, so I'm actually gonna start off with the blush because I'm waiting for the second eyeshadow palette to arrive. So I have to do blush first. So I'm going to use my Sonia G Detail Brush. I wanna see how natural and soft this can get before we sort of build it up so we can see who it might work best for, whose skin tone it might suit best. I have a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand just in the hollow of my cheek here, but nothing else. There's no bronzer, there's no highlighter on my skin and I'm using the Hourglass Vanish Foundation. So a, a matte-ish foundation today so we can really see the finish just of this blush so I'm going to start with a small amount and see how we go well it's definitely not lacking pigment even with that really small amount we've just got a really natural beautiful wash so if you were intimidated because it does look quite rich this blush in the pan this is going to work for fairer skin tones beautifully it's very very natural if used lightly which i love i like being able to kind of adapt you know and build up yeah so that's this is the sort of intensity that i would use this blush at for my skin tone so just a heavier hand and a bit more of a swirl as opposed to just touching it but if you have a fairer skin tone it's going to be beautiful on you as well and I believe this could even be built up more to work beautifully on deeper skin tones so let's apply on the other cheek as well I can't leave this cheek out for goodness sake yes I mean it's building so easily and beautifully very easy to work with it's very smooth this formula super pretty it does have a very heavy fragrance if you're not familiar with Dior blushes. It does have that typical perfumed scent and it is noticeable as you're applying it, but not really once everything is applied, you won't notice the fragrance, but it is a heavily fragranced blush. Okay, so there is the blush. I definitely think that as you sort of blend it, you get a bit of luminosity from this finish, definitely a little bit of a glow. To my cheeks, I think you can see there's definitely some luminosity that's not coming from highlights, not coming from bronzer. It's the only th product that I have on my cheeks. So definitely a beautiful bit of luminosity, but without there being any shimmer or glitter and without sacrificing the sort of smooth finish, it's really flattering. I think this is such a beautiful, versatile, wearable shade. It's perfect. It's making me have no regrets about picking up the other one because you know I love a peachy blush and I felt a little sad that I wouldn't be able to use that one. But this is so pretty. It feels like a perfect festive blush without it being intimidating. Very autumnal as well. I think it's really, really pretty. So I did have some questions about 826, the blush from last year. So let's show you them side by side. This is last year's 826 and here is this year's 621. So last year, definitely much richer. So here we have Splendid Rose from this year and last year, as you can see, much, much richer than this year and a bit more sort of ready like almost terracotta-y than this year's, which is almost like a perfect neutral. I definitely prefer this year's blush. I find it easier to use for my skin tone, but I think that the finish is prettier and it's much softer and easier to blend. I think last year's was a little trickier to blend from what I remember and I never really loved it. Whereas I feel like this year's is going straight in like my top favorites drawer. It's just beautiful and I can totally see myself wearing this all year round, but certainly for the next few months, non-stop. I also wanted to show you Birds of a Feather in comparison to Splendid Rose. So again, we have Splendid Rose, 
this time next to Birds of a Feather. So Birds of a Feather has that gorgeous sheeny finish, the shimmer finish, and is much lighter. So Splendid Rose is definitely a bit deeper, not as peachy, and a much smoother, more natural finish. Birds of a Feather blush was very beautifully shimmery and luminous. So neither of the blushes that I had that were kind of anything, gonna be anything like Splendid Rose are actually anything like it in reality. But I thought it might be helpful just to show you the comparisons. Okay, so next I'm going to try the Dior Addict New Jardin Doré 211 shade. So these have that stunning fragrance that is like sweets. I can't ever really place it. I'm sure someone told me once it was like peaches, but it doesn't smell like peaches to me but it's so familiar at the same time. Not a perfumey smell, but a sort of sweets, like I'm eating some Haribo's kind of smell. Wow, I mean, this is a really like metallic-y finish. Very pretty and it definitely has some color to it. It's really a sort of bronze, like tan but with that really metallic shiny finish. I think this would be so beautiful as like a topper as well. Let's try that. So I will swatch this new shade next to a few that could potentially just give you an idea of where it sits. I mean, you're barely gonna be able to see it on my hand, but just to give you some reference, let's swatch this next to Beige Oblique. Nude look and romance. All of them have a lot more color and pigmentation to them, but they're the closest that I have. And I have a lot of them, okay. So I'm gonna wipe that off and then I'm going to apply romance, I think. Yes, I'm gonna apply romance. And you can see that's much more of like a juicy, sort of glossy finish as opposed to having like shimmer or metallic finish. That is one of my absolute favorite nudes from this entire collection. And then I'm going to apply 211, the new shade, over the top. Yeah, and that's just really amped up that sort of sheen of a finish. I think that's a really excellent idea. If you want something just more sheer and just a little bit of like a glossy look, you could absolutely use this by itself, but I think it's got a bit of a wow factor over the top of a shade with a bit more color and pigmentation to it. Beautiful. Okay, so let's move on to the eyeshadows. I'm gonna start off with Night Walk and I'm gonna do one eye with Night Walk and one eye with Promenade Dore so we can see which we prefer, see which is more flattering. I'm gonna start off with this silver down here. We don't have any mattes in here. They're all just sort of varying levels. The most matte-like shade is the Rich black it has some sparkle in it but the base is is pretty matte which eye should we do which eye so i have my refer 16 with that silver i'm gonna apply this in that out of these this is my transition shade i don't want to use too too much of that black or things are gonna get extremely New Year's Eve very quickly. And yes, I do have to go on the school run shortly with two completely different eyeshadow looks. <laughs> but don't worry, everyone is very used to it. I don't even get questions anymore. And next I'm gonna use my Refer 33 with that black. This is a perfect brush if you just want like to add a really small amount of a shade because it blends it beautifully without being really dense so it doesn't lay too much down. So you're able to like control it a bit easier. I mean, if you like a smoky eye, this is right up your street. I think that silvery shade is so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna use my Sonia G Builder now and this silver on this side. So we've got like a white really and a silver and the silver has a bit more base to it I mean, these are not lacking in like impact. I'm not using any damp brushes. I'm not really having to do a lot of building up to get some impact. 
Got a few little specks of fallout, but nothing crazy. And then I'm gonna use that white shade with my refer 21 towards the front. Oh, that has more fallout. Okay. I'm almost using this to sort of go over that silver as like a topper. Just give me a bit more sparkle. You may find you wanna use a finger for that shade to kind of stop so much fallout. <laughs> but it has dusted away pretty easily. I would always do eyes first for a more sort of impactful look and then you can just wipe it away with a, a wipe. And then I'm using my Refa 28 to go into my inner corner with that gold shade. It's gonna give us a little bit of warmth there. I'm also gonna just run that under my brow. And then I'm taking my Refa 26 and I'm going to use a small amount of this silver because I'm terrified and run it under my lower lash line. Okay, so this is the finished look before mascara. I think that's so beautiful. Everything worked really nicely. It's been a long time since I tried one of these dual five pans a lot of the time i'm not really drawn to the color stories but this i think is so beautiful it's perfect like party season christmas parties new year's new year's parties if you like a smoky eye you want something a bit cooler i think this is super pretty it was very easy to use not a lot of fallout other than that sort of more sparkly white shade very pretty Okay, so I'm gonna start off with this bottom, sort of really gold shade, Refa 27. I'm gonna start working that into the crease. This is gonna make a much more like natural transitional shade. Nice and subtle, actually, which is exactly what I kind of want for this first shade gives me something to blend into. So then I'm gonna use the deepest shade at the bottom and my Refa 33, same brush that I used with the black. When I used the Nightwalk palette, this is such a nice shade, really sort of warm chocolatey, bit of bronziness to it. Shades are blending out beautifully. Then my Sony G Builder and this lighter of the sort of golder shades. It's very pretty. You can definitely see the sort of daytime vibes of this palette versus Nightwalk. Just gonna blend is matte into the shimmer. I'm just gonna blend that together a little more. And then with my Refa 21, I'm gonna use this very pretty, almost like yellow gold, white gold shade. To brighten up that inner third. Again, that is the only shade really that's given me any fallout to speak of thus far. And then I'm gonna use this silver, which I really feel like it stands out as not really belonging in this palette. I think the gold makes a bit more sense in the Nightwalk palette than the silver does in here, but I'm gonna use that very softly on my inner corner. And then I'm gonna take this bottom shade on my lower lash line, Refa 26. Okay, and here you have the Promenade Dore side completed. I definitely really didn't know how to add the silver shade in and it be, you know, it work and be what I was kind of looking for from this look, but each to their own. The rest of these shadows I think are so pretty. You can really see the difference between like the daytime and the nighttime, the warm versus the cool. This side obviously looks much more natural 
everyday neutral soft glam warmer tones and then this side that is very much like a party smoky look for me at least much cooler much more smoky and rich and more impactful shimmers I feel like this is going to be a case of just which is more you let's add some mascara okay and here are the two finished looks with a coat of mascara i think they're both really pretty and they're obviously both completely different it just depends whether you're more a daytime or a nighttime kind of person as to which you would enjoy they're obviously completely different which i really enjoy that there's something you know if you prefer warmer tones if you prefer cooler tones if you want something for party that's a bit more silvery and fun or you want something that's very subtle and natural there's kind of like an option depending on your preferences. Okay, so now for the part I've been super excited for, this lipstick. I don't know why I have to sniff everything. This doesn't really smell that much. It smells a bit skincare-y, but okay. I do like this applicator. I like the original liquid mattes from Dior, this same transfer proof formula, but with the matte finish. Pretty comfortable for a liquid matte and one of my favorite formulas. So let's see how this compares. The Dofa is great. It's so soft and gentle, but really precise. So I was able to get a really crisp line and shape. The opacity is amazing. You know, straight off the bat, you've got that full impact, opaque color. And at this point, it's just looking like a gorgeous red liquid lipstick. Now the instructions say to wait five minutes and then rub your lips together to get the sequin effect. So we're all just gonna sit here and wait for five minutes. How are things with you? <laughs> just joking, we're gonna skip ahead. Okay guys, we're back. It's time to rub my lips together. I'm beside myself. Are you ready? This better be dramatic or I'm gonna cry. It's gonna be very anticlimactic if nothing happens. <laughs> Okay, for a second I thought I waited too long. And maybe I did, but did you see the glitter start to come? It's kind of hard work. Okay, so at first I thought nothing was happening, but now after a few rubs, the glitter has appeared. I wonder if it would be better to do it while there's still a bit of moistness from the lipstick. It says five minutes in the directions, but I feel like that was too long. I feel like it was kind of hard to get the glitter to appear. I mean, these are excellent. There's a slight bit of transfer there, but really not much. And it is pretty freshly dried down. And as you can see, even like that, it's hard to get off my hand. They are very long wearing. This feels very comfortable and soft and lightweight right now. I wonder if I apply it over the top. Yeah, so that's kind of covered the glitter back up. So this time I'm literally gonna leave it like a few seconds and then see if it's easier just to rub your lips together while it's still a little wet, but see if the glitter still comes through or not. Okay, so it didn't come through really straight away. It's just starting to now. So you wanna wait like, I'd say a couple of minutes until it starts to just go a bit like tacky. Because these do dry down quickly. Yeah, and the glitter is coming. It's not insane. It's not like glitter lips, essentially. It's, it's actually a pretty 
but little bit of sparkles, quite fun lipstick, but it's not crazy, which I actually like, because I would actually wear this. Whereas if it looked like I'd sort of rubbed my finger in, you know, loose glitter and put it all over my lips, I wouldn't wear that. This is just giving it a bit of fun, a bit of sparkle, a bit of party, something a bit festive, without it becoming like, alarming. <laughs> what do you guys think? Would you wear this? Okay, so let's talk about this collection. Definitely a bit of a game of two halves, this video, or a collection of two halves. I feel like there are some really special products in here, some lovely products, and some products that I think are totally skippable. So let's start off with the eyeshadow palettes. As much as this is the one I'm drawn to, the Promenade Doré, just because I'm boring, I'm a neutral girl, I'm a understated, natural neutral lover. This is the color story that I was most drawn to, but I think actually on the eye, as pretty and nice as it is and as completely wearable as it is and the formulas were very easy to work with and pretty and everything worked beautifully it's not special it's not exciting even for me and i do get excited okay at neutral natural eyeshadow palettes just not this one it's fine i don't think you need it i think it's expensive for what it is and i think you could get this look out of so many other palettes. Whereas the Night Walk has pleasantly surprised me. It's so much prettier than I thought it would be. It's so much more wearable than I thought it would be. And I think it's a little more different when you compare it to all of the other palettes that we already have and all of the other palettes that Dior have come up with. I think this is the one that would be most worth trying out of this collection because I just think that the Promenade Doré is just, it's very, very overdone as a colour story. I think this one just is a little more interesting as far as the colour story goes and actually more wearable than you might expect. Some really pretty shades in there and a much more impactful look, especially for like the holiday Christmas season. The blush is absolutely stunning. I'm so pleased with it. I think the finish and the colour is gorgeous. It's right up my street. I think that might be my favourite product from the collection. It's just so pretty but wearable and versatile as to how much pigment and colour you really want to get out of it and it's got a gorgeous natural luminous finish which I really appreciate and I think it's just gorgeous and right up my street. Exactly what I love from a blush. The lipstick case is very, very special. I think it's a gorgeous, extra beautiful, and it's actually one of the cases that I think is worth having. I don't always buy these. I only buy them if I think they're really wow, and this one is really wow. Much more beautiful in person than I think pictures can convey. The Dior Addict shade actually pleasantly surprised me on the lips. I kind of thought, having swatched it, I'm never going to use that. It's too sheer. It's not giving me any colour. But actually, I think it's super pretty on the lips and wearable on its own or as a topper. So I'm really pleased with that as well. And now to this liquid lipstick. I don't think I will really wear this very much. I will probably wear it on Christmas Day and any Christmas parties that I get invited to. I will certainly wear this. It's not one that I would wear every day, day in, day out. I'm not a huge liquid lipstick fan, but I think the glitter element is so fun and it's not over the top, it's perfect. It's just a little bit of fun, a little bit of festivity and something fun that people will like notice and think is really pretty and love. And I think it's just a lovely gift as well. Like if you wanna get something for somebody who loves makeup, that's such a, beautiful little stocking filler or gift for somebody who loves this shade. I think it's nice that they did something different for Christmas with their lipsticks, but something that you could actually wear and enjoy. And it is an excellent formula. It's very, very comfortable. It is slightly drying if you wear it for an entire day, like almost all liquid lipsticks are, but it is one of the much more comfortable, better ones. And it is very good as far as transfer and longevity and comfort overall. 
So I really like these. I think they'll be a big hit. People will love them. They're very fun. I can't see myself wearing it a lot, like year round, but will I wear it to every Christmas party I go to, New Year's party, will I wear it on Christmas day? I think I probably will. Yes, it's super fun. So I think if I had to pick one item from this collection, I would probably go with the lipstick case. I think it's special. I think it's very holiday feeling and just super beautiful. And you can, you know, you don't have to buy a lipstick. You can get this and put one of your existing favorite shades in it and you'll love it and get a lot of joy out of it for a long time. As far as the makeup products though, I would pick the blush. I think that is my favorite item out of everything that I tried today. So there you have it. Please let me know if you plan to pick anything up from this collection and what your picks are, or are you skipping everything altogether? Does anything appeal to you or not? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. But I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye-bye.